Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Today, I'll be discussing the tragic case of Willie James Howard. Researching this case broke my heart and truly aggravated me. Willie seemed like a kid who was down to earth, but unfortunately, it was that personality which is what cut his life short. Now, I encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not just look at my video for all of the information. Here we go. Willie James Howard was born on July 13th, 1928 in Live Oak, Florida to parents James and Lula Howard. Willie was known to be a nice person. He was known to be humble. People have described him as handsome. Willie was intelligent. He did well in school. He loved singing, and he worked as a delivery boy in this store called the Van Priest Dime Store, and people had described Willie as a gentleman. On Christmas of 1943, Willie is 15 years old at this point, and he wrote a Christmas card to his co-workers, including one co-worker, a girl, a white girl, named Cynthia Goth. I don't know exactly what was written in this letter, like it was a Christmas card, so I can just really assume that, you know, people were just really saying, that Willie was just saying Merry Christmas and, you know, wishing his coworkers a happy holiday. But whatever was included in that card, Cynthia did not appreciate the letter, which I'm sure is one of, at least, you know, according to what I've heard about Willie, I'm sure that this is one of the kindest Christmas cards that she ever received, but yet she had an issue with it. On New Year's Day, 1944, Willie wrote a letter of apology to Cynthia. And this is what was said in the letter. Dear friend, just a few lines to let you hear from me. I am well and hope you are the same. This is what I said on that Christmas card from W.J.H. Willie James Howard with love. I hope you will understand what I mean. That is what I said. Now, please don't get angry with me because you can never tell what may get in somebody. I did not put it in there myself. God did. I can't help what he does. Can I? I know you don't think much of our kind of people, but we don't hate you all. We want to be y'all friends, but she won't let us. Please don't let anybody see this. I hope I haven't made you mad. If I did, tell me about it and I will forget about it. I wish this was a northern state. I guess you can call me fresh. Write and tell me what you think of me, good or bad. Sincerely yours from you know who for Cynthia Goff. I love your name. I love your voice. For a sweetheart, you are my choice. Unless I'm wrong, I think that was a pretty kind and very genuine letter. I guess Cynthia, who was like 17 or 18, did not think this was a kind letter because something about this very heartfelt kind letter offended her. But instead of, you know, um, having common sense and throwing out the letter and moving on with her life, she handed the letter to her father, Alex Phil Goff, who was the former state legislator. When Goff got word about this letter, he was livid. So on January 2nd of 1944, he, along with Selden B. McCullers and Reginald H. Scott, they all went over to Willie's house and they did not just go to the house, not, you know, to just have a word with Willie, who was 15 years old, a child, but they literally ripped this child out of his house at gunpoint. That's not even the worst part. Willie's mother, Lula, did her best to protect her son. She held on to her child as tight as she could. But those demons basically ripped her baby out of her arms at gunpoint, threatening her life as well. And she never saw Willie alive again. Willie's father, James, worked at the Bond Howell 
lumbar company. So Goff, McCullers, and Scott drove over there as they pretty much held Willie hostage. They drive over to where James is working and you know, James sees that his son is with these demons and they grab James with them and they drive all the way to the Suwannee River. Now there are two accounts of what happened at this river. According to Goff, he, McCullers, and Scott only threatened to either beat Willie up or, you know, threaten to watch him get disciplined by his father, James. But according to Goff, Willie refused to get a beating and escaped. But instead of, you know, just running off and running away and making a new life for himself, they claimed that Willie was just so bent on not getting a beating that he jumped into the river and drowned himself, claiming that they wanted to help, but that they couldn't and that Willie's father James did nothing to help rescue his son. According to James, Willie's father, Willie was tied up by Goff, McCullers, and Scott. They pointed a gun at his head, telling Willie to jump in. And you know, basically, they threw Willie in the river as James helplessly watched as his son was losing his life before his very eyes. James was told not to say anything and to go back to work and James did exactly what he was told. According to what I know from history and around this period of time, I'm more prone to believe James's side of the story because I cannot imagine the pain and horror that he felt as a parent to be so helpless and watch his child lose his life and there was absolutely nothing that he could do to rescue him. The sheriff in town, his name was Tom Henry. He ordered a black undertaker named Ansel Brown to, you know, to recover Willie's body and immediately bury him. And from what I gathered, it seemed like Willie didn't even have a funeral. Since Goff, McCullers, and Scott were clearly cool with the sheriff, uh, they were not arrested for Willie's passing at all. A lawyer by the name of Harry T. Moore, whose case I covered last year, heard about Willie's case, then passed this information on to the, uh, another lawyer named Thurgood Marshall, and the NAACP. Harry Moore was able to get in contact with James and Lula, who were forced to flee to Orlando after being told how they needed to leave Live Oak in 24 hours, which is absolutely trash. Like they didn't even get the time to mourn their son. They did not get the time to mourn their only child. Willie's life was lost so brutally and instead of being allowed to grieve their only child their lives were threatened james and lula were able to give their statements to harry moore and harry moore shared it with the naacp in hopes of securing a conviction eventually james was able to make a statement to the grand jury but the grand jury only asked two questions and from the questions I gathered, these are really two irrelevant questions. The grand jury asked James how old his son Willie was and if Willie wrote the letter. Those were the only questions that the grand jury asked and dropped Willie's case. Harry Moore worked desperately hard to reopen the case, but it just wasn't possible. Years later, Scott, McCullers, and Goff would pass away without facing any charges for what they allegedly did. Decades later, 
those in the community were so moved by Willie's tragic story that they provided him with a headstone and a funeral, something this child was robbed of after his short life was robbed. There were more attempts decades later to reopen the case to at least identify the monsters who took Willie's life, but the state of Florida would not budge. Even though the case wouldn't be reopened, we can take comfort in believing James and Lula's accounts when they were alive. On top of that, it didn't seem like Golf, McCullers, and Scott even repented of what they did, and there's no account of them expressing any guilt for what they allegedly did. If these three monsters did not repent of their sins and trust in Jesus Christ alone to save them, then I am 100% sure that God made sure that they would face punishment for what they quote unquote allegedly did to Willie for all of eternity. Still, it's a shame that Willie lost his life. My heart breaks that his parents lost their only child all because several people lacked common sense and couldn't move on with their lives. But all we can do now is remember Bully, remember the sort of person that he was, and not forget his story so that his passing isn't in vain. I thank you all for taking the time in your day to watch this video. If you did like this video, please feel free to hit the like button. If you have any thoughts about this case at all, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you would like to see more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there is a certain True Crime case that you would like me to cover, go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for next True Crime Tuesdays, and I will talk to y'all later.